Good morning. Welcome to Expert Insights. I'm your host, Raju Mandhi. And here at Expert Insights, we take external views of internal successes by foreigners, expats, and immigrants who have made Philippines their home and are doing good in the Philippines, either in business or society. This Friday morning, the 29th of November, we have a very special show because it's not about business, it's not about society, but it's about love, literature, life, and laughter. And it is about uh, the bard, the writer of all times, uh, Shakespeare. And the person to discuss mastering Shakespeare with us today is a teacher, is a guru of Shakespeare, and he's brought his theme of thespians here to talk to us, give us insights and into the mystery of Shakespeare. So let me welcome Mr. William Atwood, not William Shakespeare, <laughs> who lives and works in the Philippines and of course teaches a lot of kids and people how to perform Shakespeare. Bill Atwood, welcome to Expert Insights. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Bill, uh, before we talk about the bard, before we talk about Shakespeare, tell me a bit about yourself. Well, at my age, that's a long story, Raju, but right, yeah. <laughs> I grew up in the States, of course, born and raised in the States, moved to New York, right. where I met my lovely wife, who's a Filipino-British actress. Who is here watching the who show. She's here watching the show. Wonderful, wonderful actress. Um, I was actually a professional dancer. No when kidding. I met her, yes, I was what dancing kind of dance professionally. Modern dance. Okay. <laughs> so uh, that's what I was doing, and I met an actress, and we sort of combined the two. Your wife is an actress. Wonderful actress. Wonderful Shakespearean actress. Oh my gosh. So right. we're a double threat. All right, we're a double danger. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I was dancing, and then I was struck by a car crossing the street in New York. <laughs> Broke both my legs. And she was behind the wheel? Unfortunately, no. I might have been hit a little less hard. Uh, <laughs> but it certainly brought my dancing career to a screeching halt. All right. Um, and she, uh, she encouraged me. She down from the skyscrapers and picked you up. She was uh, on the streets with me, rode yeah. in the ambulance to the hospital, and yeah. encouraged me to move in a different direction, which was theater, and uh, I got a job teaching movement for the actor. Wow. Uh, and all of the stuff I did for movement for the actor is based on Stanislavski's psychophysical movement That's training. Heavy stuff, yeah? It's some pretty heavy stuff, yeah. but I think they just added, he added psychophysical because it was the age it does of the psychological yeah. Uh, stuff and so they had to put psycho in the title of everything. So uh, 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 now two questions before we delve into the magic of this show is number one, how and when did you move into teaching Shakespeare? So that's a great story. Uh, I started with movement for the actor at the American Academy of Dramatic Arts in New York City, old, old established wonderful acting school. Yeah. Um, and then my wife did a Shakespearean play, and I hit it off with the director, and I went to all the rehearsals. This was in him. New York still. This was in New York. And how many years ago was this? Many. Okay. okay. <laughs> all right. we'll, we'll go with that. Many years ago. Yeah. Um, and that kicked it off, and I really took it to a different level. And then I started working with kids, doing... Shakespeare for kids okay. and started putting on plays using 8 to 12 year olds. Now uh, you and Philippines, uh, what are you doing here and what do you propose to create using Shakespeare in the Philippines? Um, I wanted to bring some deeper understanding and love for Shakespeare, Right. Uh, some training for actors, but right but just for the everyday person out there who might have an interest in Shakespeare, but they're intimidated because of the language and the history behind it. Yeah. And it's much simpler than people believe. Yeah. And it's... No, I mean, I, I didn't say, yeah, that it is simpler than people believe because it is complex to me. But I'm saying, yes, that I'm one of those guys who <laughs> wants to understand, yeah. Uh, so the idea is to give them an introduction to it so they feel comfortable and they can start delving into it themselves and they can 
start reading Shakespeare and understanding and watching Shakespeare? Yeah. Uh, oh, here's, a, here's a little confession. All my life I have wanted to understand, uh, live, perform. Not perform as in professionally, but perform the wisdom behind uh, whatever Shakespeare put out. No? That was me. Now, what do you think is the world's perspective? Why is Shakespeare important today in life to people? It's amazing yeah. that still 400 years, uh, 2016 will be 400 years anniversary of his death. Yeah. And still more Shakespeare plays are put on every year mm -hmm. than any other playwright in history. And he just speaks overall to humanity on a level I think no other playwright hits. Every single, if you're talking about jealousy, greed, anger, revenge, every human emotion is packed into his plays, every single one. Uh, and the guy died when he was like 53, so imagine had he lived another 20 years, we would have had even more plays. Another so. treasure trove of wisdom coming from him, no? Yeah. But uh, why is it still relevant today and how can people use it? <laughs> yeah? I mean, 400 years later, do his concepts, do his theories, do his philosophy still ring true and what am I going to do with them? Though I personally, yes, I'm interested, but what can the world do with them? Uh, interesting question. Uh, the reason so much rings true is because so much is still true after 400 years. If you look at just the sayings in everyday English, all that glitters is not gold. Right. Neither a borrower or a lender be. A wise father knows his children. Okay. Uh, so all these things, he had right. a depth of perception of the human soul, I think, that just goes beyond the average person. And it, it still rings true and speaks to us 400 years after his passing. All right. Uh, so now, Bill, uh, what is your uh, strategy? I know you have a group of people here, thespians, to back you up. No, uh, You said you are bringing this to the Philippines, what exact, what steps are you taking? Are you putting up stage shows, training classes, and uh, tell me the excitement that runs behind all this action <laughs> that you're creating. Um, the excitement for me is watching the people grasp Shakespeare right. to the point where they're running with it and enjoying it. Um, so all my classes are based on Sl Stanislavski, the yeah. father of modern acting who believed if you're going to have a class or if you're going to be a director, you have to have a class that's fun, inviting, nurturing. Yeah. There has to be some danger involved because you're getting up in front of people. Yeah. But at the same time, <laughs> the excitement has to be controlled. Right. Okay. So that it's all worked in there. And for me, it's just to watch people blossom. So we have some kids today. They're yeah. all either grade school or middle school kids who basically have had seven or eight classes only. And you'll get to hear them do um, Shakespeare's advice to the players. It's actually Hamlet's advice to the players. Okay. But it's really Shakespeare coaching actors on how he sees his pieces being acted. OK, so let me, let me introduce the show today. So we are breaking up the show into three segments. Now, we met Bill, and he talked about Bill, of course. And then we'll break it up into two more sessions where some kids will come up and do Othello. Then two young ladies will come up and do a piece from... Hamlet. Hamlet. And then two gentlemen will come in and do a piece from... Well, one gentleman's doing Hamlet. And, and you and I will talk about we'll what they do. And we'll discuss what they so did. So you will understand what Shakespeare is and what Shakespeare does. Hopefully. So let's take a little break and we'll have the first set of actors come up and do or tell. Beautiful. So stay watching. This is Expat Insights. I'm your host, Raju Mantian. Welcome back to Expat Insights. I'm your host, Raju Mantian. We are with, the, with Bill Atwood and the thespians have just appeared. They're standing right next to me. Isha, Anusha, Arya, Tori, and Christina to do Hamlet's advice to, to the, the players. The, who are the players? The players are a group of actors who are putting on a play for Hamlet's uncle. Okay, so this is from Hamlet per This se. is from Hamlet. And this all five kids will speak up together. They're taking turns. They're taking lines. Okay, so... Uh, uh, what, do you, what do you say? Action, lights, 
and camera. camera. Go on. Speak the speech, I pray you, as I pronounced it to you. Trippingly of the tongue, but if you mouth it as many of your players do, I had as leaf the town crier spoke my line. Nor do not saw the air too much with your hand thus, but use all gently, for in the very torrent tempest, and as I may say, whirlwind of passion, you must acquire and beget a smoothness. Oh, it offends me to the soul to hear a robustuous, periwing-pated fellow tear a passion to tatter to very rags to split the ears of groundlings. Be not too tame neither, but let your own discretion be your tutor. Suit the action to the word, the word to the action, with the special observance that you overstep not to the modesty of nature. For anything so overdone is from the purpose of playing, whose end both at the first and now was and is to hold as toward the mirror up to nature. Wow. That's to okay. show virtue her own feature, scorn her own image, and the very age, body of the time, his form and pressure. And let those that play your clowns speak no more than is set down for them. For there be of them that will themselves laugh to set quantity of barren spectators to laugh too. Though in the meantime some necessary question of the play be then to be considered. That's villainous and shows a most pitiful ambition in the fool that uses it. Go, make you ready. All right, applaud, <laughs> applaud, 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 applaud. Pause, for, yeah, think about, think about, very nice. So, Bill, uh, what happened? Uh, what, was this Shakespearean language? That was beautiful. They did a great job. Uh, speak the speech, I pray you, as I pronounced it to you, trippingly on the tongue. So Shakespeare's telling the actors to have a nice, subtle, but... Uh, Engagement yeah. with the audience. And the tongue to, to let it be trippingly. So hit the words and let it be uh, light be and bouncy and, and suave about yeah. how you speak. Uh, that's what Shakespeare. So you're saying Shakespeare directed his plays at that time? This was him doing it? They had or? no directors at that time. Yeah. So the writer or the house manager yeah. would help in what we would consider direction. So Shakespeare actually wrote in Hamlet his direction for all players doing Shakespeare at any time. Was this true for, was this or is this still true for all Shakespearean plays that there are instructions on how to run the show or stage the show? Well, that would be it. These instructions are from Shakespeare himself. They're right. 400 years old, yeah. and you'll never get any better advice on how to play Shakespeare than Shakespeare's own words. So back in the day, back in his time, no? uh, where was this done? Was this done in an open park or a theater, or was it done with all the lights, camera, and action? Or Tell me a little bit about the all history. those things, except they had no lights, so yeah. they did it in the middle of the day. Yeah. And if you go to the Globe, the rebuilt Globe Theater as it stands now, it's open to the sky yeah. because they pictures. needed yeah they needed light, and so it would be performed in the b middle of the day. And for a penny, you could stand on the open ground. For a second penny, you could get a seat. For a third penny, you could get a seat with a cushion. So. Uh, or the, 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 the plot and the message or the story of Hamlet, what is it all about? Because this is from Hamlet, right? This is from Hamlet. Okay. And Hamlet's a very old story. It's actually an old Nordic story mm -hmm. that had been turned into plays even before Shakespeare. So imagine when they redo movies today yeah. and they'll take an old movie and redo it. Yeah. So Shakespeare actually took an old story of Hamlet, yeah. rewrote it into the beautiful version we have today, and uh, the original version was uh, about a prince who's usurped yeah. by his uncle, just like in the play. So was it fiction or true? Was it fiction we or fact? We do not know this. And what about copyright laws at that time, 400 years ago? There were no copyright Royalties, laws. Royalties, nothing? Nothing. So that's why Shakespeare had none of his plays written out during his lifetime. They weren't published. It was after he was dead. So that they were just... Memorized? I mean, well, he would write them out and give out sides, tips, yeah. as they were called back then. This is what you need to know. This is, and it would be the cue line, and then your bit, and then the cue line to stop. And then the so, next so person would Let's have ask it. these people, how did it feel? Uh, Isha, Anusha, 
Arya, Tori, and Christine. How did it feel? Tori, you want to say something about having memorized these lines? Um, I didn't think it was that hard, but I've been doing theater for a few years now. Yeah. So they just kind of like stuck with me. So have you done Shakespeare before? No. All right. And Christine? Oh, I thought it was... Uh, it's, it's fun to memorize scripts for some reason to me. I like acting a lot. And Shakespeare is, is fun because it's different too. What does it make you think and do in, in your head? What does it do in your head or heart? You know? How does it impact you? Um, it, there's a lot of, I don't know, in my opinion, there's a lot of emotion in the words itself. So yeah. you can, like, when you get it down, you can kind of feel it and then like use that and apply it to the lines that you speak. So build the challenge of uh, having young people memorize this stuff, act it out, feel it. Uh, how do you go about that? I mean, <laughs> how do you manage to achieve, get performances out of people who haven't had stage experience before? Uh, again, I think it goes back to Stanislavski, and you just try to set up a supportive, nurturing atmosphere that's fun, yet challenging, uh, like I said, a little danger mixed in there because they're getting up like today. I'm very yeah. proud of them all. You know, your nerves, yeah. Nerves yeah. have to be running, but they got up and they did very well. Yeah. Uh, and this is only after a few lessons. So imagine if they stick with it and six months from now or a year from now, they're going to be brilliant. All brilliant. right. You, you guys, like, uh, how, how did you memorize this? I mean, at home with family or... Did you read it over many a times? What was your procedure? You say it. You can say it. Go speak up. Um, I did it every night and morning, and it just stuck to me because like there was a rhythm. So yeah. There you go. So is this going to be staged, Bill? Oh. Actually, on the 9th of December, 5 yeah. o'clock, at Fully Booked on High Street, yeah. we're doing the play within the play from Midsummer Night's Dream, and all these beautiful ladies are in it, along with some other actors. So they won't do Hamlet, they'll do Midsummer's Night's Dream. They'll do Midsummer's Night's Dream. These, gen these gentle ladies. Yes, and there's a play within the play, yeah. and it's about 10 minutes long. And there'll be also some grown-ups from the other class doing monologues. Okay, so let's take another break now. Very yeah? good. And then we'll have a, a, what play coming up next? Uh, we have some excerpts from Hamlet coming up next, I believe. This was Hamlet too. Yes. This was Hamlet So too. we have a theme going. So we have a theme going on Hamlet. So stay watching, and we'll come back with Christine and Nick. Nicole and Christine to oh. do Hamlet one more time. So stay watching. This is Expert Insights. I'm your host, Raju Mandian, and this is Bill Atwood and the Minstrels. Thank you very much. Very and good, we'll ladies. see you on the next show again. <laughs> Salamat. Mandian. We are still with Bill Atwood and his Thespians. And now he has two uh, slightly grown up Thespians. We have William uh, Manzano and we have Christine Kowanko. And Bill, you want to give us an insight on what uh, William and Christine will do. Yeah, they're doing two of the most uh, beautiful monologues from Hamlet. Okay. And William is actually playing Hamlet and he's contemplating suicide. Life is not going exactly the way he wants. Ouch. It's yeah. to be or not to be time. Oh, it is that one. Yes, it, it is. is that one. Okay, okay. It's that one. Oh my boy! How long is it? About uh, a two, minute. Or two minutes yeah. or so. Mm -hmm. To be or not to be. Wow, I want to hear that one. Yeah. So and what's Christine doing? And Christine is playing the woman he's wronged. He sort of seduced her and talked about love and marriage, and now he's so deep into his own drama that he's basically sent her to the nunnery. Get out of my life. So quickly, Hamlet is all about. The big picture Hamlet the overview. The big picture, if you've ever seen The Lion King. Okay. His dad has been murdered by his uncle and then married Mustafa is in the picture. Mustafa, Mustafa is alive and Mustafa is a Shakespearean Mufasa. character. Mufasa. Mufasa, Mustafa. Okay. Oh, Mustafa is from Singapore. Mufasa, that's him. All right, so who goes first? Does it, is it Mufasa or is it Mufasa's victim? Let's have William start. 
All right, William, ready. Let's, let's roll. <laughs> To be or not to be, that is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune or to take arms against the sea of troubles and by opposing, end them. To die, to sleep, no more. And by a sleep to say we end the heartache and the thousand natural shocks that flesh is heir to. Tis a consummation devoutly to be wished. To die, to sleep, to sleep, perchance to dream. Ah, there's the rub. For in that sleep of death, what dreams may come when we have shuffled off this mortal coil, must give us pause. There's the respect that makes calamity of so long life. For who would bear the whips and scorns of time, the oppressor's wrong, the proud man's contumely, the pangs of despised love, the law's delay, the insolence of office, and the spurns that patient merit of the unworthy takes when he himself might as quiet as make with a bare bodkin. Who would fardels bear to grunt and sweat under a weary life but that the dread of something after death? I lost. <laughs> That's okay. That's so we right. get the idea. <laughs> that's all right. That's okay. When it comes back, you can come back. We'll spice yeah. it up. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. That's what you do on TV. When I finally decide to actually do it, I'll, I'll come back. Okay, okay, okay. To commit that. Great, so great. great. Okay. <laughs> but that, that's quite heavy stuff. That was heavy stuff and beautifully done. So we, I, I have a question to throw in while he takes a deep breath. Huh? Okay. Uh, it requires a lot of attention on the part of the actor to live it. Number one, what he's saying. And also the audience somehow has to have a, be involved in the whole scene. They have to be drawn in. Yeah, and yeah. that's where the spoken word is so important. If you can pronounce every word and, and take them with you, but they have to hear every syllable of every word. You can draw them in. You need to. Otherwise, Shakespeare, if they don't understand what you're saying, if they don't hear every word, they're kind of, kind of get drifting away and just kind of... their heads and go to sleep. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Christine's turn. All right, Christine, you need a glass of water, you need a massage, you need a foot spa, something. <laughs> foot spa will do. Take your time and rock. Oh, what a noble mind is here overthrown. The courtiers, soldiers, scholars, eye, tongue, sword, the expectancy and rose of the fair state, the glass of fashion and the mold of form, the observant of all observers, quite. Quite down. And I, of ladies most dejected and wretched, that suck the honey of his music vows, now see the noble and most sovereign reason, like sweet bells jangled out of tune and harsh, that unmatched form and feature of blown youth blasted with ecstasy. <gasps> Woe is me to have seen what I have seen. See what I see. Thank you. Very nice. Oh my. Very gosh. nice. Holy moly. Yeah, so we have two people on the edge here. <laughs> you know what? I was quite ashamed. I just remembered that the next line that I was about to deliver was the, was the most beautiful part. Go ahead, of that finish moment. it. Come no, on. I was about to say, but the dread of something after death, the undiscovered country from whose born no traveler returns. 
puzzles the will and makes us rather bear William, those go ahead. <laughs> William, go ahead. Have. Finish it as if you never stopped. Yeah, take a breath. <laughs> we'll cut <laughs> it there. And yeah, we'll cut it in. You got 60 seconds to wrap up. Go. Uh, but Maybe. the dread of something after death. Wait, wait. Uh, sorry. Right. Talk through the camera. Right. But, yeah. the, but the dread of something after death. The undiscovered country from whose born no traveler returns puzzles the will and makes us rather bear those ills we have than fly to others that we know not of. Thus, conscience does make cowards of us all. That's it. Ah, oh, okay. <laughs> applaud, 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 applaud. That's okay. <laughs> So, uh, Mr. Atwood, yes. uh, this, is, this, is, this is quite demanding of people, of human beings. I believe it to, is. To, to pull out all that exists inside of them and, and bear their souls. The, <laughs> bear their bone marrow and their uh, washed underclothing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. That's, that's quite challenging. And so uh, I can see what it does to people. It makes them bigger than who they are. It makes them bring out the best from inside of them. And at the same time, have to perform, memorize, and live somebody else's emotions through them. That's the challenge. And deliver it as if it's not memorized. As if it's and not And deliver it as if it's just coming to them. So, so at all the these, uh, how many Shakespeare plays are there? There's 30 odd plays. Some he so, wrote with other people and some. So for 400 them. years, the whole world has been doing this. 40 odd plays and his sonnets and going through this trauma, through this disaster, through this volcanic eruption to be who they are. And still rings true. People and still, still relate still to it. still make it valid. Gosh, amazing. So uh, what are your thoughts? How do you feel? What are you going to do with this? Well, uh, as a theater actor, yeah. theater uh, practitioner, uh, it helps me a lot. I mean, uh, I have friends in music who would say, uh, uh, singers who would say, uh, before you can sing anything well or right, you have to be able to sing Mozart. And uh, so I think it's uh, that way in acting. It might be possible that uh, for you to be able to perform uh, other things well, you yeah. might as well start uh, with, with the Shakespeare. groundwork. It's, it's the holy ground. Christine, your thoughts in one minute before we take that break, okay. Well, I certainly intend to continue with Bill's classes. Yeah. He'll be having more and more of them next year. Yeah. And hopefully this is a start um, for some sort of play. You see, I don't ask the why question, <laughs> but very quickly, why do you want to do this? Oh, I've been a Shakespeare groupie since I was in second grade. Since oh. I first picked up Titus and what Veronica's does it do by to mistake. You? That's what your does first it do break? to you? It, it frees me, you know. It frees my spirit. I feel that it exercises my mind and it sort of taps into my soul which not a lot of literature does so it, it makes me complete it makes right. me alive bill on that note let's take a little break one more time and then come back with two more actors two more to actors. do uh one is doing a little bit from midsummer night's dream okay that's the one with the donkey Get yes up. yes yeah, that one. would but, be that all right, play. Yeah. and what's next um from he's barone from Love's labor. barone from Love's Labor's Lost. Okay, let's take that break and we'll come back with two more actors to give us a little bite of Shakespeare. Thank you very much, William yeah, and Christine. And we'll splice it up. Don't you worry about it, okay? <laughs> <laughs> All right, stay watching and we'll come right back. Good morning. Welcome back to Expert Insights. Now we have two more Thespians. Two Thespians. Nick Ocampo? Campos. Campos. Nick yes. Campos and... Nicole Kohanko, sister to Christine, the earlier actress, not sister, friend. <laughs> daughter. Oh, daughter, okay, okay. <laughs> sister's good, sister's good. So what are you guys going to do for us? Well, mine is a monologue, of, the monologue of Theseus from A Midsummer Night's Dream. And uh, mine is a speech by a character named Biron from a play called Love's Labor's Lost. And as the name implies, he is one of several lovers in the piece. And he's sort of realizing that he cannot keep an oath he made with his friends to not fall in love. Yeah. Build quickly the context to these two monologues. Just build up so that the audience know what they are feeling and thinking and listening. Well, Nick's is beautiful. It's a group of guys who've basically sworn off women 
the Woman Haters Club, mm. and they're going to be monks, yes? Yeah, monks without robes. That's the way I like to think of yeah. it. Yeah. And so they've sworn off women, and the first thing that happens after they make this oath is beautiful women walk in. and Right after. <laughs> everything is gone. Yeah. Uh, and Theseus is the... She's playing what would be referred to as a britches role, a woman taking on a man's role. And she is the Duke of Athens, and he's a jolly, fun type guy. And some working uh, class guys have decided they want to put on a short play for, for his wedding day. And uh, the master of revels, the guy who puts on plays, has kind of cautioned her that they really don't know what they're doing. They don't know how to act. It's terribly written. And Theseus goes, that's all right. Sounds like a good time. Let's Okay, let's, let's see roll that. the cameras on uh, Theseus then. You want to go first? All right. All right. And the kind are we, to give them thanks for nothing. Our sport shall be to take what they mistake. And what poor duty cannot do, noble respect takes it in might not merit. Where I have come, great clerks have proposed to greet me with premeditated welcomes. Where I have seen them shiver and look pale, make periods in the midst of sentences, throttle their practiced accent in their fears, and in conclusion dumbly have broke off, not paying me a welcome. Trust me, sweet, out of this yet I picked a welcome, and in the modesty of fearful duty I read as much from the rattling tongue of saucy and audacious eloquence. Love, therefore, and tongue-tied simplicity in least speak most to my capacity. <laughs> I need a translation over there. Short and sweet. So, what did she say? It, or should I? Sure, sure. Uh, well, uh, the master of uh, revels and mirth uh, was saying that uh, that's not exactly what these people do. They're not actors. So he was cautioning all of us, all of us watching the royals, that uh, it's not going to be that great. It's going to be pretty terrible. Mm -hmm. So I was like, uh, it's okay. We'll just take what, what they've got. And uh, I don't think that, uh, I mean, I think that, uh, that their efforts, their, everything they're trying to do actually means a lot more than if they just did something that they really do and it's nothing to them. Mm. Okay. All right, Nick, you are on. Yes. Take the mic. Take the mic. Oh, um, here, here, from, I, so, so oh, I really, can't, do, I really do. can't stand up. Is that, uh, is that a thing? You want to stand up? If, okay. if, that's, if that's all right. I just, okay, go. It sort of, just sit up a bit, yeah. Oh, okay. I'll sit, I'll sit up a bit. Okay. <clears throat> the king is hunting the deer. I am coursing myself. They have pitched a toil. I am toiling in a pitch. A pitch that defiles. Oh, defile, foul word. Well, set thee down, sorrow. So they say the fool said. And so say I. And I the fool. Well proved wit. <laughs> By the Lord, this love is as mad as Ajax kills sheep, kills me. It, I a sheep, I a sheep. Oh, by the Lord, I will not love. In faith, I will not. If I do, hang me. Oh, but her eye, oh. Oh, but for her eye by this light, I would not love her. Yes, for her two eyes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do nothing in the world but lie, and lie in my throat. Uh, oh, by heaven, I do love, and it hath taught me to rhyme and be melancholy and... Here is part of my rhyme, and here my melancholy. <laughs> <laughs> well, she hath one of my sonnets already. The clown bore it, the fool sent it, and the lady hath it. Sweet clown, sweeter fool, sweetest lady. Oh, by the world, I would not care a pin if the other three were in. Here comes one with a paper. 
God give him grace to groan. <laughs> oh my God! Nicely done, yes. Yeah? Nicely you. done. Well, uh, I, I cut in nicely is a very my word, isn't it? Wasn't that amazing? It was amazing. <laughs> and uh, he's been living, dreaming, sleeping, eating, swimming, <laughs> drinking this. Yeah, mm. he loves Shakespeare. And it's yeah. in his uh, DNA. It's in his. Uh, well, that, that, that's a bit of a, a, a blasphemy, I guess, because, you know, as Filipinos, it can't be possible that Shakespeare is in our DNA. But I've, I've, yeah. I've, 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 I've injected myself, you know, Shakespeare Manzano. Yeah, oh, yeah, what's yeah. What's the big yeah. deal? <laughs> <laughs> William I've Manzano. Gotta, I've got to hide my track marks. I think I've, I've shot up on Shakespeare maybe one too many times. So, yeah. So, uh, well, I'd like to thank you for your performances. No? Bill, you want to do a rap on this. You want to tell us a little bit about Shakespeare and his... Uh, value to Philippines, what it'll do for us. We are about to wrap up the show. So if you want to announce your events, <laughs> your uh, this thing, but this has been a great insight, at least to people who watch and to understand more. Where do we go? What do we do? And appreciate it and yeah. love it. Yeah. Uh, to like become addicted guys. like these people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's gorgeous. Uh, so we have classes going on at Fully Booked uh, in the Fort on High Street. You can go look at our posters. Uh, we're just wrapping up this round. They start again in January, so we're taking Christmas off. Uh, and the kids are putting on their show on the 9th of December, 5 o'clock in the evening in the basement of Fully Booked. So please come down. It's free, though we're asking donations for Carafil so we can help street dogs and abandoned cats and other animals who need help. Uh, so it's a, for a good cause, um, but come on down and see us. And uh, Nicole and Nick, you want to say something about why and how you do this? <laughs> First there. Well, me, I've always been into theater, and so when I found out about the Shakespeare class, I was like, sure, I'll, I'll give it a try. I've, I've always wanted to do this. Me too, yeah, so. me too, me too. Nick, you. Yeah, I, I think that um, to sort of piggyback on what you were asking, Bill, before about why it's still relevant today, I mean, I think uh, for me it's become kind of part of my personal mission even in, in a country like, like the Philippines. Um, and I've, I, you know, it's, it's, it's a British thing, but I've seen it in the States. I, I saw it in yeah, Boston yeah. where I went to college. I, and it's, I've said to friends that when you perform Shakespeare, it is amazing the response that you get, provided you do it well and you do it with love. No matter what trans how you translate it, what accent you give it, however you perform it, and the beautiful thing about this man's work is that he never wrote an acting instruction book. He never, t I mean, yes, there was the advice to the players, but there is no wrong way to do Shakespeare. So it, it, w it was just letting out your emotions yes, in the best possible exactly. way. Exactly, and communicating the story and, 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 and telling marveling, the story. Yes, and marveling at the power of language. That is something that can be appreciated by every single, uh, every single human being, no matter what their background, their nationality. He wrote, it is astounding to think how universally he wrote, because one person spoke through generations across almost 400 Four. years to us, speaks for us, holds the mirror up to nature in which we see our reflection. And so it's, it's just, it's part of my desire to make it clear to Filipinos that, yes, once you get past the fear of the language, of course with the help of brilliant minds like Bill, it, there's a whole it's, 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 it's a whole philosophy, a love, uh, a, a, a sort of electricity. There is so much in the soul of this writing. And so it's, it's for all of us to have and to share. Yes. All right, so on that note, that's beautiful. Thank you very much, Nick, Nicole, and Bill, and the gang. And to wrap up the show, I'm going to call everyone up here so you can just be on the screen Come as on we Come say on. Mabuhai and good night. These are all Shakespearean thespians who have been part of the show and their parents are here too if they want to come up here. So thank you very much for Exciting Sides. You can give us an applaud and we'll see you next week on Exciting Sides. I'm your host, Raju Mandian. Bye-bye and Mabuha. Woohoo!